This review will contain major spoilers for the story and gameplay of Life is Strange. Life is Strange is an episodic graphic adventure game developed by Don't Nod and published by Square Enix. Now that the season is fully completed, I thought a review of the complete package was in order. Life is Strange uses the structure originally popularized by Telltale in their recent games. Telltale's signature style, being adventure games with their mechanical aspects taking a back seat to focus more on the narrative, New Age adventure games have a tendency of asking the player to make tough moral decisions rather than solving puzzles. The player is told that these decisions will significantly change the gameplay experience. In Life is Strange, we follow Max Caulfield, a new student at the prestigious art school Blackwell Academy. After seeing her friend Chloe get murdered in the girl's bathroom, Max discovers that she can rewind time briefly. Upon the discovery, she saves Chloe's life. Afterwards, both Chloe and Max set off to unravel the disappearance of a student, Rachel Amber. What's unique about Max's power is that it's often used in gameplay. Compared to other Telltale games like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us, Life is Strange contains a greater variety of puzzles and mechanics. The rewind mechanic is used in several puzzles throughout the game. While it might be redundant, the rewind mechanic allows the player to revert time to a previous state. The game uses this mechanic in two ways, puzzling and decisions. I'll talk about the decisions in a moment. The puzzles are simplistic. They're never really used in fun or interesting ways. For example, the first real puzzle finds the player trying to move Victoria Chase from blocking the entrance to the dorms. Once the player determines the correct order, there really isn't anything for them to do. Another type of puzzle in Life is Strange is the good old guess and check. In the second episode, Max has to prove to Chloe that she has powers. Firstly, the player has to guess what's inside Chloe's pockets. This simple puzzle involves memorizing key details about the items and then guessing them correctly. Then, in a very similar fashion to the previous puzzle, Chloe asks Max to predict a small series of events inside the diner. If you make a mistake in either one, you're forced to start from the beginning of each puzzle, which can be very tedious. Sometimes the game requires you to go on a fetch quest to find items in a small area in order to progress. I'm baffled as to why these pixel hunting sequences are present. All it does is pad out the gameplay. Hey viewers, if you want an engaging, immersive gameplay experience, get blackout drunk and hide your keys. You'll have to find your keys to get on with your life anyways, why not make it extra exciting? Stealth sequences in non-stealth games are always highly controversial, but Life is Strange subverts this by making them almost non-existent. There's zero threat to getting caught since Max can instantly rewind time. The way I see it, this destroys the fundamentals of a basic stealth game. The tension of being seen should be a priority during a stealth segment, not something that can be avoided or redone easily. The game is already focused so much on the narrative. Wouldn't it be easier to remove these sequences altogether and replace them with cutscenes? The time travel mechanic is a neat idea, but it's limited to very few different types of solutions. From a player's perspective, these half-baked mechanics just don't seem worth including. The resources dedicated to making the gameplay could be cut severely to make everything, especially the presentation, much, much better. The game's visual style and choice of music was really the highlight of Life is Strange for me. The art, character models, environments, and music blend well to form this comforting teenage aesthetic. The music does a really good job of encapsulating the angst found in high school teenagers. It's one of the few things I genuinely enjoy about this game. Excluding Japanese games, high school settings are rarely seen in video games. It's a shame, too, because in the right hands, there's tons of potential for some great stories. Unfortunately, though, it falls flat on its face on a very important aspect, animation. Now, Max, since you've the poor lip-syncing and stiff animations in this game really bothers me to the core. The the now, while I love and much prefer more mechanical-based games, these types of adventure games with little gameplay are always a guilty pleasure of mine. With the game's mechanics so banal, there's no excuse for a narrative-focused game like this one to not emphasize the presentation. Because of the nature of the game itself, the player is constantly focusing in on the presentation. Without any sort of mechanical backing, the presentation acts as a one-way street to immerse the player. Any technical problems stand out and breaks immersion. That's why it bothers me so much. In my opinion, presentation should be the utmost priority when developing games with little to no gameplay. These flubs detract from the experience regardless of the narrative's quality. If the animation and lip-syncing wasn't bad enough, the final nail in the proverbial coffin is the awful writing. Almost every single line of dialogue is terrible. First and the most damning, the writing tries to emulate the style of young high schoolers. The game's dialogue is filled with made-up slang attempting to sound young and hip. While I understand that Life is Strange is trying to connect with a younger audience, this ultimately fails. Being a relatively young person who still talks to people in high school, in my experience, no high schooler talks like this. The dialogue tries to be contemporary hipster bullshit but comes off as awkward and cringy. 
It's clear that the writer is pretty out of touch with the young Americans today. Almost every line of dialogue comes off like a 50-year-old dad trying to impress his kids' friends. It's laughable how bad it is. Here's some of the worst of it. So, did you get a chance to check out the movie booty on my flash drive? Oh look, it's Max Caulfield, the selfie hoe of Blackwell. Don't worry, Max. I'll put a vintage filter on it right before I post it all over social medias. Now, why don't you go fuck your selfie? Hello, yes! Nice shooting, Tech. Now that's what I'm talking about. Satisfied? <laughs> like, never? So I want one more uber cool trick shot. Max's inner dialogue during gameplay encompasses all these problems and in addition manages to insult the player too. In between looking at items and solving puzzles, the game throws tough moral choices at the player. Never mind that these choices are often very one-sided. Each time you decide, Max says this very obvious bit of dialogue questioning your decision, allowing you to rewind and remake your decision. I really enjoy the ability to go back and see both outcomes of the decision, but not only is it insulting for the game to spell it out for the player, this dialogue takes away any of the player's agency. To me, this is the antithesis of a game like this. Weighing tough decisions in certain encounters is generally fun in games like this. That's the thing though, Life is Strange and other games like it masquerade the fact that the player is in full control of the events at hand. Upon starting every episode, the game displays this screen. What do you think this small blurb means? To me, it implies that meaningful changes to the narrative are made based on the player's actions. Each and every major choice only really amounts to a few lines of dialogue changed. The game boldface lies to you. Now, this kind of trickery has been done in similar titles before in the same genre, but the narrative goes out of its way to completely disregard every choice you've made. This is the last chance for story spoilers. Stop now if you want to find out for yourself. Bear with me for a bit, but my point will become clear very soon. As soon as Max discovers her time powers, she keeps getting visions of the town, Arcadia Bay, being destroyed by a massive tornado. Throughout the season, weird environmental anomalies occur, foreshadowing that the visions are true. Beached whales, snow when it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, lunar eclipses, etc. Ignoring these signs of the apocalypse, the Hardy sisters set out to find what happened to Rachel Amber. Eventually, Max discovers that by jumping into photos of the past, she can change the events of that time and place, and therefore change the future. She accidentally discovers this by saving Chloe's deceased father from a car accident. When Max returns to the present, she finds things to be completely different. Max is now popular, and Chloe is severely crippled to the point of being unable to care for herself. Near the end of the scene, Chloe asks Max to help her commit assisted suicide. It's up to the player to decide, but that's not the point. This decision doesn't really carry any weight because of the time travel. This situation ceases to exist almost immediately after this scene. Max returns everything to normal again. The scene doesn't exist. It's not real. None of this happened, and it never did happen as far as the timeline is concerned. What was made out to be an emotionally touching scene just fell flat because of the time travel mechanics. Fast forward to the last episode. Through Max's abilities, you create events that leads to the killer of Rachel Amber to be captured, but the big ass tornado is still gonna destroy Arcadia Bay. After some time-bending nightmare sequences, Max finally concludes that saving Chloe breaks the time continuum, causing these weird environmental abnormalities including the tornado. Now, the player is left with a final decision, destroy a town of completely innocent people and run away with Chloe, or let Chloe die in the bathroom scene. Firstly, even considering letting an entire town be vaporized for one person is preposterous in my eyes. But that's not my main issue here. These two choices effectively negate every single decision the player has made up to this point. If you choose to sacrifice Chloe, none of the preceding events occur in that timeline. If you choose to destroy Arcadia Bay, it's pretty certain that all your friends and acquaintances will be gone with it, making it effectively pointless since they're all dead. These Telltale style graphic adventures all have this problem, but in Telltale games, even if they don't really matter, at least those games acknowledges your choices in a small way rather than brazenly casting them aside. I have never seen a game throw away the player's agency like Life is Strange. Considering the warning shown before every episode, it was incredibly frustrating realizing the true nature of this game. Now, it could be argued that the game is about destiny, and well, destiny doesn't change, and well, destiny, you can't change your destiny, so it's destiny, so there's no point in trying to change it because you're meant to do the things you're gonna do. But I really don't buy that. Why would you include such a warning at the beginning of every episode? And I mean really, I really mean every episode too. It's not just like shown at you once when you boot up the game for the first time. No, it's there in every episode when you boot it up. Frustration is a great way to describe my feelings with Life is Strange. 
A constant stream of frustration flowing from the runoffs of bad gameplay, bad writing, bad story, bad characters, and bad animations all flowing into one big shit river. The game is on a fundamental level bad. It's a shame too. I really dug the setting and atmosphere. Life is Strange is an absolute mess, but not the sort of technical mess you commonly find today. Its cringy, predictable writing and terrible gameplay destroys an interesting setting and atmosphere that would have made for a compelling adventure game.